Hey guys, Auto Talent here, and today I wanted to do a video on input lag. I've had the idea for this video for a while now, but I wanted to be sure that I gave the most information possible. In its most basic way, input lag is the delay when you try to do something in a game and when the game responds. There's a whole lot of things you can figure into that. I'm going to go over the fundamentals on how to set up your PC for the least input lag possible. Now it's worth mentioning this won't necessarily make you a gaming god, but from my own personal experience as well as what I hear from others, it's much easier to get the jump from people online and feel like you're more connected to your game. The first thing to look at when it comes to input lag is your hardware. I'm not an expert on every brand or anything, but in general a good, high quality gaming mouse and keyboard will do you well. Mechanical keyboards are nice because they have very positive engagement, meaning you know exactly when your key was pressed. As for mice, you want to have a high polling rate. From the research I've done, anywhere from 750Hz to 1000Hz is recommended. The DPI of the mouse isn't as critical. I'll get into mouse adjustments and settings in another video, but basically the DPI is the base sensitivity of the mouse before any other adjustments are applied. For example, I run 4300 DPI in raw input mode in Battlefield 4. Also make sure that you have the most updated drivers and software for your mouse, and make sure you have the pull rate turned up in the settings if that is a setting available to you. Now that you've done that, you'll want to do the tweaks to your computer in-game. It's worth explaining the ways and reasons that input lag gets into a game on the computer's end itself, and the different methods of reducing or eliminating that problem. The number one cause of input lag is vSync or vertical sync. The purpose of vSync is to keep the vertical and horizontal updates of the monitor at the same rate to avoid lines on the screen. Here's an example of screen tearing courtesy of Wikipedia. When you enable vSync to counter this effect, you're essentially telling the game that when it's done rendering the screen, it's only allowed to output an image to the screen at the refresh rate of the monitor. When this happens, your controls often have a delay in making it to the screen, since they can only fit in your commands at the speed of the monitor's refresh rate. This is why things like 120 and 140Hz monitors are good for gaming, as they give more chances for your controls to make it to the screen. As for solutions to the problem, there are a few options. One is to disable vSync entirely. This will introduce no input lag from trying to synchronize the screen, but will bring back the dreaded vertical lines. Running a higher refresh rate monitor without vSync also reduces the chance of the lines, as they occur most often when your PC is running over the monitor's refresh rate. Another option is very expensive, and that's to run a monitor with an adaptive refresh rate. This is a pretty new option and right now only works for NVIDIA cards and monitors with G-Sync technology. What it does is it allows the monitor to only refresh at the rate of the game's frame rate. Because the frame rate and the refresh are always in sync, there's never any lag. Your controls will update as fast as your computer can render them. There are very few of these monitors out right now and they're very expensive, but if you want a great gaming experience, it may be worth the money. The third option is one I personally prefer and the one that I feel is the best balance between clarity, image quality, and performance. This is to limit your frame rate in the game config or using a third party program. I made a few short example videos on how to do this in different programs that I'll link in the description for reference. The game config is the best way as it's guaranteed to work. Third party utilities are hit or miss sometimes, You'll, you, know, you can try it, see if it works for your game. And if not, you know, maybe try another program or see if you can do it in the game. The idea behind this is to have the game itself limit its own output rather than it being limited by the monitor. You would set this to two frames below the refresh rate of the monitor because generally when you have frame rate limits of any kind, they get overran sometimes and you could observe this by watching fraps. Now once you've done this, you've probably already noticed a huge improvement in latency, but there's still more you can do. There's a setting in video card drivers as well as some game configs called pre-rendered frames or frames to render ahead. What this does is more or less what it says. The video card renders a certain number of frames before displaying them, kind of like a queue. The reason for this is to smooth out the load on the video card to give you better frame rates. The downside is you're adding input lag of however many frames of that buffer is into your game. This is not a hard or fast tweak and there's a good reason it's a default in a lot of games. Sometimes games can't utilize your CPU properly or they'll have major slowdowns if this is changed. Typically I'd recommend if you have a weaker CPU you may not want to change this. I mean you can try and see what happens but it may reduce your frame rate a lot because the lower this setting goes the more load you put on your CPU. Personally I run an 8 core AMD FX and I run it on one in Battlefield 4 and most multiplayer games and it runs just fine. 
and one is the ideal setting to lower the input lag the most possible. Some have a zero setting, the zero setting typically does not work. If you notice it's caused a huge drop in frame rate or any issues in the game, you can you know, increase it a little bit and see if it helps or just put it back to what it was before. Three is usually the default for most games, although I have seen a few games here and there run like five where I remember one had eight once. Well, that's everything I have to cover for this video. There are tons and tons of other things that figure into this, such as frame latency, but I think it's a little out of bounds of this topic. So, I mean, maybe I'll cover them in another video, maybe not. It just depends on whether they're relevant, you know, to what people do. Well, thank you for watching, and feel free to like, comment, or subscribe for more useful tips and info. Thanks.